all know why you're here, right? I'm not opening for anybody. <laughs> My God, this is the, I'm not kidding, the largest survivalist crowd I've seen since Utah. <laughs> well, thank you for coming out. And thank you for taking an interest in keeping yourselves alive. Yes, I have written a book called The Zombie Survival Guide. Uh, you might see it in the humor section. There's a reason for that. And that reason has nothing to do with humor. Because I personally find nothing funny, remotely funny, about being killed and eaten by zombies. <laughs> now, people have asked me, why have you written about zombies? To which I respond, they are scary. <laughs> but if you want to go the next level deeper, why are they scary? It's because they do not obey the rules of conventional monsters. What is that? Well, the first rule of conventional monsters is you have to go find them. All right? We have risen from a bunch of ape tree dwellers, if you believe in all that, to the dominant species on the planet. We have driven the monsters into remote corners of our planet. And therefore, you have to go to them. You have to go to the swamp, or the castle, or the abandoned summer camp. <laughs> And if you do that, if you go in search of the monsters, I have no sympathy for you. That is a personal choice that you make to find trouble. All right? And this happens all the time. Those of you might remember a man, dearly departed, known as the Crocodile Hunter. Wait, somebody's going to moan. Oh, no. Too far, too soon. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> they say it was a tragedy. No, it was sad, but the man was a crocodile hunter. All right, he made a personal choice. He wasn't drafted by the Australian Ministry of Crocodile Hunting. He didn't just go to his mailbox one day and get his draft note and, oh, crikey, no. He was probably your age, and at, at some point, you know, at the University of wallaby or wherever, he sat down with his guidance counselor and he said, you know, I'd like to spend the rest of my life poking dangerous animals with a stick. <laughs> so he chose that. Now, had he not chosen that, had he chosen to mind his own business and just been Steve Irwin, the tax attorney, and if one night he was home, I don't know, Shrimp and a Barbie or whatever it is they do down there. And there had been a knock at the door. And he said, I won't get it. And he'd gone to the door and opened the door. And there had been a stingray. <laughs> and it jumped on him and stabbed him in the heart. That would have been a tragedy. <laughs> and that is why zombies are so scary. Because you can mind your own business. And they will come to you. And they will come to you in the hundreds, in the thousands, in the millions, and if you live in China or India, in the billions. <laughs> that is why zombies are so scary, and that is why surviving a zombie outbreak is imperative. What's also imperative is me getting rid of this plant, because I have to walk around. <laughs> it looks nice, but come on. Now, What's the first thing you need to do when the dead rise? Panic. Someone said panic. Well, we're going to talk about panic. No. The first thing you must do is divest yourselves of the misconceptions that have been embedded in your subconscious by conventional zombie entertainment. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about all the zombie movies and television shows and video games that are meant to entertain you. And that's fine. That's good. That They are entertaining. But that's Hollywood. And Hollywood just wants to make money. They don't care about saving your lives the way I do. <laughs> so therefore, if you're going to entertain... All right, what, who's here? Who here is a creative writing major or drama or anything? All right, there's 11 of you. <laughs> All right, after we talk, these 11 will school the rest of you. And they'll tell you that when you write something... Uh, a horror movie, you have to tell an interesting story. And in order to do that, you have to build in drama. 
And in order to build in drama, you have to have your characters make the wrong decisions. All right? If you had a movie where you had a bunch of teenagers and they went to a cabin in the wilderness, as apparently teenagers do all the time, uh, and one night they heard something. And they said, I heard something. What is it? I don't know. Um, well, let's all just stay in a group and turn on all the lights and uh, stay away from the windows and we'll just wait. We'll wait till the sun comes up. When the sun comes up, we'll get in our car and we'll drive home. <laughs> that would be the right choices. <laughs> That would also be a 10-minute movie. <laughs> so you have to build in false choices in order to make it dramatic. You have to say, I heard something. What was that? I don't know. Um, well, uh, Skippy, you go check it out by yourself. <laughs> and, and Mitzi and I are going to go in this room and have sex. <laughs> and that's fine. That's drama. But the problem is, in this country, we tend to take this stuff as gospel and believe that these people are making the right choices. And those are the choices that are going to get you killed. So this is what I mean by divesting yourselves of the myths that have been implanted in your subconscious. For example, the most important thing, asset, you're going to need when fighting zombies. I don't know you're all going to shout out what you think you should know. Someone said, he, he almost said it. Sh no, you're going to say shotgun. No. <laughs> This is the most important thing you're going to need. Just water. <laughs> yes, I was going to say that. Yes, you were. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you've read my book, you haven't gotten to page 63 yet. Nice hair. Anyway. <laughs> In a zombie outbreak, you will not be running all the time. You will not be shooting all the time. You will be sweating all the time, and you will be losing bodily fluid. And you will die of dehydration way before the zombies ever get to you. But you don't see that in zombie movies. I've never seen a zombie movie when they're running, trying to get away, and someone says, Oh, wait a minute. Oh my god, I have such a headache. Oh. Oh, I'm so dehydrated. Oh, I'm really dizzy. Oh. Go on without me. <laughs> You've never seen that, but that's exactly what's going to happen. And more important than just water, clean water, okay? I've never seen anyone in a zombie movie go, oh my god, I shouldn't have drank out of that stream. Oh, oh, I just crapped my pants. <laughs> but that's exactly what will happen. You will crap yourselves to death <laughs> if you don't have access to clean water in a zombie outbreak, all right? That's what I'm talking about, discussing it realistically and getting away from this stuff. All right? For example, when, let's move on to the most important thing in American culture, the guns. All right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Upper Peninsula, yeah. We, we hunt rocks. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I know. I flipped through the local channels. I didn't know there was that many ways to kill a deer. <laughs> but guns, yes, we all love them. It's American. Woohoo! Yay. All right. Guns do not kill people. No, and bullets, you know, just, then someone's going to say, people kill people. No. <laughs> bullets kill people. Make them move faster. The bullet is the weapon. The gun is just the launcher. All right? So how many bullets do you think you can possibly carry? There are 300 million Americans. And I don't know how many Mexicans. <laughs> I don't mean that in a racist way. I literally don't know. I just there's probably a lot of them. And I know there's a hell of a lot more Canadians than they want you to believe. <laughs> so yeah, oh, one guy just ratted him out. What a collaborator. <laughs> oh, yes. Bonjour. 